My name is Legacy Russell. I'm the Associate Curator of Exhibitions at the Studio Museum in Harlem, and it's my great pleasure to be here to speak about This Longing Vessel, the Studio Museum in Harlem Artists in Residence 2019-20 exhibition featuring the work of E. Jane, Nadine Pierre, and Elliot Reed. I'm excited to think about the fact that this question of longing is one that is decadent. It is gorgeous. It is painful. As we see the works that the artists have presented here, we think about drama, remix, style, suspense. We think about the fact that as E. Jane has reflected on their interdisciplinary work about this idea of wanting, they have said longing to be American, longing to be in my body, the longing I imagine Viola Davis felt when she quoted Harriet Tubman. In their movement across this space, they leave behind the traces of their alter ego, Misa, who is an underground pop star for the cyber resistance that examines the Black diva and asks us to think further on those we've lost and those who continue to march in the world through a womanist tradition. Alice Walker's 1983 definition of womanist comes in four parts. One, a Black feminist or feminist of color, responsible, in charge, serious, Two, also a woman who loves other women sexually and or non-sexually. Three, loves music, loves dance, loves the moon, loves the spirit, loves love and food and roundness, loves struggle, loves the folk, loves herself regardless. Four, womanist is to feminist as purple is to lavender. So we see in these rooms that are steeped in purples and lavenders, pieces of another self that are kind of left behind for us to wade through and to work failingly to resolve. In this mirrored room, we show a projection of an artist who really is a work in progress. We see Misa, who is this kind of alter ego avatar figure. And um, the piece itself, which is titled Misa, Nevea Live Behind the Scenes, really shows Misa as a womanist in workshop, a pop star in progress, a diva in proximity, but not in physicality. So we're almost there with her, but not quite. And we really watch her, not only in sharing her stage, but also to um, navigating our position in relation to it and to the act of entertainment. The presence of these traces of a kind of performative other self triggers so many tensions. On the one hand, the kind of glamour of black celebrity, which of course is fetishized as it travels as both a trap and an artifact across geopolitical lines. On the other, the romantic siren song of an alter ego that earnestly promises to pay homage to the complex histories of black performance and the presence of black women as empowered agents therein. E. Jane has noted in thinking about these tensions and what is active within them, they said, our bodies are still traveling to places where either slaves were traded or that have histories of colonial violence for purchase as entertainment experiences. So when we look at this monumental poster of Misa, E. Jane's alter ego, we of course are thinking about this idea, this kind of question of the tensions between empowerment and violence, and as well the different facets of Eve's practice that underscore Black womanhood as being multidimensional, complex, rangeful. And that, of course, feels so urgent in this moment in time. In the room of Elliot Reed, of course, we're thinking so much about architecture as we step into an incredible expanse of the color brown. It is a work called Hue, um, which is a digital color scan of the artist's right hand, a skin that as we penetrate it and pass through it, we have to consent to it enveloping us and as well be both guest and intruder within it underscoring the consumption of black and queer bodies is an erotic, the brutality of this eating, the way in which black enfleshment in its kind of ungendered exposure has shaped a visual culture and its violent imagination. The underpinning of the body we stand within when wrapped within Reed's hand calls forth this ongoing case of white democratic donor Ed Buck, who in 2019 was indicted in the deaths of two black men, Timothy Dean, 55, and Jamel Moore, 26, and in January 2021 is set to stand trial for these murders. The case of Ed Buck manifests quite literally a hell on earth, what Reed calls 
in his essay, A Real Life Horror Story. Horror and a necessary haunting, of course, can be engaged within Reed's presentation. We wander through cuts and tears across the wall in this piece supernumerary, which gives us portals to peer through, windows perhaps that allow us to have a different relationship to witness. And as well, we are engaging actively in kind of participating in this quartet, the score of Reed's own ready-made composition. Here, of course, are the sort of songs and whispers that came before us, bound up within this room. Our bodies are containers and vessels as we pass through this space, but also the space itself is a vessel, and so does important work in housing us and allowing us to participate um, and as well negotiate what feels like to kind of call in the language of Hortense Spillers, a living laboratory. When we pivot to think about Nadine's work, and, you know, kind of her ongoing practice, we of course are thinking so much about what it means to be engaged with Black work within a white canon. Um, You know, thinking about her influences, Nadine has noted that she, of course, is naming El Greco, Caravaggio, William Blake, right alongside Bob Thompson. It's this complicated and anxious relationship with these masters. She acknowledges that, you know, she loves them, but of course still wants to push back against them, wants to think differently about a way in which her brush can do important and radical work and bringing a black spirituality, gesture, fantasy, bodily presence into a canon that has done so much in terms of excluding blackness. When we think about, too, her work, we're, of course, seeing that there is a presence of a black femhood. Femhood, of course, thinking of bodies that are femme-presenting and, as well, celebrated in their femininity. Pierre, of course, in the context of these pieces, expands the frame, making space for new figures, but also as well pushing us further to think critically about what it means to worship them, to celebrate them, to live with them, and to dialogue with them. In this, she's allowing her figures to take up residence in the space, to kind of haunt us, to howl, to engage us, and as well, intrigue us further in questions of vulnerability and as well in the possibility of both mourning and celebrating. <laughs> 